All right, I think we're officially called to order. Okay, um, so as far as the chair's report, not much to report other than we have to have a, a chair for our next meeting. I'm willing to do it again, if you'd like, but if somebody else wants to do it. I think um, you should keep doing it. <laughs> Nope. Okay, I'm happy to do it again next meeting if you'd like. So, all right, great. Um, and our next meeting is the 8th at 4 o'clock. So we're set for that. Um, August. Yeah, August 8th. Yeah. And that's it for my chair report. So um, reviewing the minutes from last time, are there any changes we need to make or... We consider those approved. Motion to approve. I move that we approve the minutes. I only saw one misspelling, but it wasn't ours. <laughs> so okay. I don't think we can correct it. Okay. Um, oh, and we need a, a note taker for today. Anybody okay. willing thank to you. do it? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. So do we have a second for approving the minutes? Second. Great. Awesome. Uh, Allison, I'm assuming you're still our liaison. I think there's still been a question of that. Is that finalized or are you? Still a question of that? I don't know. Stephanie and I are competing fiercely for the title now. Are you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was that desirable. Um, <laughs> Chris, no. Stephanie's been eyeing this for weeks yeah. now, and I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Well, I didn't know there was a question about it. Well, at the last oh. meeting, we didn't know if that changed with the, the new. Um, uh, not not yet. They Perfect. have not stripped me of my liaison status. Awesome. Um, although it is good to get more, you know, to do some rotating some and mm -hmm. um, especially you know, with new, as new members come onto the select board, just like what happened with me, it's, it's, um, you know, a challenge to learn everything and figure out what everybody's working on. And sometimes I know that that ends up being frustrating for committees because, um, you know, they feel like, huh, we were making progress. Exactly. And now, you know, now yeah. there's a group of people that feels like they don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just thinking about in the long term how to combat that is good for everyone. Um, and are we on the liaison report? Yeah. Um, so the, the one thing um, that um, I know Will had been especially involved in um, and the HRC had weighed in on to some extent was the peer discussion. Um, and so interestingly, uh, that um, it uh, the planning board um, seems to have really considered a lot of the feedback that they got um, about that. And the one of the things that seems to have resonated um, was a lot of what the HRC and or members of the HRC were saying about the protection of the views um, and areas um, that could potentially qualify as a, um, what is it, a National Historic Scenic, National Scenic Landmark. Um, through the National Park Service. Um, and one of the things that's key to that is sort of the preservation of existing areas that don't have development. So, um, uh, and so that would be in the coastal harbor, especially Chris O'Rowe um, is one of the planning board members. And I haven't, I didn't hear all of their discussions. Um, we did at the select board had a workshop with the planning board that was mostly about short-term rentals. And then there was a little bit of time at the end um, to talk about moving forward with the peers. Um, and the, you know, the Harbor Committee had done their reports. And there was some question as to you know, exactly the scope of work that the Harbor Committee had or what they felt like they were supposed to be weighing in on or not, or weighing in on a, on a prohibition or not. Or um, and the planning board did a couple meetings and um, they must have talked about it afterwards more. Um, so they've, they're at the point where they are unanimously recommending that there not be new private residential piers um, mm -hmm. permitted in the outer and coastal harbors. And um, 
so that is um, that's on the agenda for the select board tonight. Um, one is an action item that is um, late kind of specifically about the needing to extend the moratorium, which I think no matter what kind of needs to happen, whichever the idea being that something is going to go to voters in November, um, whether that be just some changes to the height um, as um, initially recommended by the Harbor Committee or whether that be um, what the planning board is recommending. And so I think the select board will be talking about um, you know, what the next steps are, because I know there's there's not certainly not anywhere. From what I view, not consensus on the select board. Um, and um, so yeah, that'll be, um, that wasn't I initially the, you know, the, the like historic preservation or view preservation. Um, wasn't the main driving force of this, but I think it was mentioned in the moratorium. Mm -hmm. But um, it's too bad Will's not here because I know he had done some research mm -hmm. on the, um, you know, just like those historic districts that we designate, designating um, areas of you know special natural scenic importance. Did his research get to the board? Or I, yeah, I don't think so. It it was. Some of it was shared sort of quickly at the planning board hearing, um, but I don't believe that's been shared in any other way. So it's one of those things where one, you know, one committee has or, or board has discussions and then it goes on to another board, but um, sometimes people that have spoken up about it, you know, at one part of the process don't realize that that's not you know the end and they'll say oh i already i already spoke about that i already went to a planning board meeting and then um it's like oh no sorry that wasn't the one we were deciding um i know that's happened to me personally plenty of times so anyway um i don't know if that'll there be any decisions made i wouldn't think any final decisions made tonight but sort of a just i think discussion about the process moving forward Thanks for that. Um, but I wanted to also ask about Jeremy because we're in the process of beginning to work on our historic preservation ordinance. Mm -hmm. And I know he had knee surgery and then I heard he was going to be out for a long time. So can you just give us an idea of when we <laughs> might see him again? I mean, our work can continue, mm -hmm. but we need to touch base with him from time to time. Yeah, you know, and that's, and that's another one like, um, trying to keep up to with the you know the, the select board and the um ordinances and making sure that nobody's completely caught off guard and nobody's wasting their time um i've mentioned it in my select board report numerous times but i imagine you know not everybody has on the select board has been out there just looking at historic preservation ordinances around the state um jeremy um, yeah, you're basically, it sounds like you have about as much information as I have. Stephanie, you can feel free to, just need to jump email in. email him. He's not. Right, um, he is working. Exactly. In the mm -hmm. office very often. Mm -hmm. If he does come in, it's a hop in and hop out. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Him. So he's literally. I actually don't think literally. he's coming in at all now. I, I haven't seen him, but mm -hmm. he said that if he ever does come in, it's going to be a hop in, mm -hmm. grab stuff, mm -hmm. and hop out. Well, we have a lot but to he, do anyway, but we yeah. can also touch base with Shenley. Yeah, she can tell us. I don't want to bother him if he's, you know. No, you can bother him because, I mean, yeah, it's, he's working yeah. and he's, that's, okay. So he's I mean, a a he's okay, working from awesome. home and he's supposed to be working. Yeah. Yes. Okay. People are going to want to keep yes. in touch with him. And he's zooming with as many people as he can. Okay. Yeah, okay. you shouldn't act any different. Like, okay. Okay. Um, he's not on. Leave. One of those things where FMLA or anything like that. <laughs> right, right. Go ahead and okay. Yeah. We've we've been moving forward with some drafting. Yeah. So we'll be certain of that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. If at first you don't succeed, just email them again. Um is great. there already a I'm sorry to interrupt, but is there already a historic resource ordinance? Just a demolition ordinance. Okay. We don't have a That's comprehensive one yet. Okay. 
but it's in the in the comprehensive plan. Right. And, yeah. But, yeah. We had a, a couple years ago now, I guess it was somebody came from the Maine Historic Preservation Commission, Commission, which is the state agency and kind of gave an overview to the select board. But but you really have to keep in mind, like you have to expect all of that has those of us that were there may have forgotten that. And those of us that weren't there, you know, imagine like starting from zero. So it's really important to frame like, you know, this is what it says in the comprehensive plan, and this is why we're moving forward with this. And, you know, this um, communication. You know, at some point, it would be good um, to get back. I'm hoping to where committees come in and do um, brief presentations to the select board on sort of like what their work plan has been. And, yeah. Um, yeah, you'll see we have a really we're packed agenda tonight. On. So we're working on getting more things on the agenda. Um, and uh, give us a few months to get it ironed out. <laughs> okay, good. But you can always also come during public comment and just say everything or, or send things to the select board or ask me specifically to include things in, in my report okay. to them. Great. Anything else? All right, awesome. Uh, committee reports. I mean, I don't really think there is a committee that's active right now except for our historical uh, preservation ordinance, but that's not really officially a committee. We'll get to that later. So moving to old business, um, are, are there any budget updates that we have to talk about? I don't think so. Um, walking tour update. Is that the, the printer? Only, the, the only Yay. Oh, good. There um, is one update. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> just that there's 55,000 in the town budget for yeah. replacement of the roof on Curtis Island. So, oh, that's passed and now. Oh. Yeah, that's big news. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Oh, but is that that's not thought to be enough? Well, yeah. I'll talk about that in a bit. Okay. okay. So, printers. Uh, yes. So, they will. Uh, make a mock up and give it back to me, and then we get a chance to look it over one more time, uh, decide if it all looks good, and then uh, and then it goes to print. So, is the mock up a know. hard copy or a digital copy? Or? I'm not really sure. <laughs> okay. I gave them a digital copy and all the images, so I haven't heard anything back yet. Um, I imagine they're pretty busy, but. Did we make a final determination on the print run? How many were printing? Um, I think we were going for a bigger number because we figured we might as well. Uh, and I'm sure it's in my notes somewhere. Okay. Right. <laughs> but I don't know, 3,000 or something like that? I can't remember, yeah. but the price difference was such that it didn't make yeah, sense didn't to go that. for 500. Yeah. Okay. It'll be popular. It will be very popular. Awesome. Can't wait to see I it. I had somebody today in the street ask me about St. Thomas Episcopal Church. So I thought, oh, they'd be. If I had brochures on me, I could mm -hmm. like hand them yeah. one. Well, walking up and down Chestnut, you can see the tourists just wandering aimlessly. Yes, going, Why isn't right. There a tour? Yeah, right. We got to organize those tours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anything to comment on the St. Thomas? Is there anything? Well, yes. Um, you know, their moratorium or their delay is finished. The 90 day delay is finished. No, it's in July. It's not in July, the 27th or something. And so, you know, it could, something could happen really soon, but I did get a call, an interesting call from a woman who's been hired by the Episcopal church to help them with fundraising. And she wanted to know any anything about why the demolition delay was put on and what we had recommended and why we had recommended and so I just told her um, basically that the committee felt that the tower was an essential part of the building that it seriously altered the look of the building and that we would like to have it we would like to have had them look further into sources of money for restoring and they did not have good great figures for 
tearing down, the cost of tearing down and replacing with the addition that they're going to replace as compared to repairing the existing structure. They, they had not really done their homework in that respect. So um, she said, well, that's really interesting. And I kind of got the feeling that she wanted just background information because she was going to be meeting with the church committee and that maybe she was kind of interested in exploring the costs of restoring versus and I said, well, they've already made their decision. And, you know, mm -hmm. frankly, the committee felt that they had made their decision before they came to the hearing. Mm -hmm. I just thought she might as well know mm -hmm. exactly what went down. Well, and so I've been suggested that money in this group, that money could have been found. So that she right. might have been interested in that. Right. She was interested in that. She Because I'm still she, willing to talk to anybody. Right. And so I told her that we had a committee member who was willing to talk about the process. She had been through the process before. Mm -hmm. So I gave her a bit of money from grants, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Over a million dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And much, much smaller. I mean, was a, that was a church with a congregation of under 25 people. Oh. Maybe no you guys minister. should give a brief little quick thing for this might be just interesting for Stephanie. I don't know if you've been following this, Stephanie, that kind of shows what the committee does and the pulled tower thing. Mm -hmm. Just a brief, yeah. quick summary of what they were trying to, what they're doing. What they were trying to do. Did you know, Stephanie, what they were trying to do? I did not know how oh. they were. Well, see, nobody knows. And with the tower thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's we the tower that's all covered up. Yes. It's covered yes. with plastic and they put it on hold like four or five years ago. Right. And that the time has expired from which the assessment company who was mm. assessing the tower thought that that wrap could only last for five years or something like that. So the time has come that they have to deal with it and they've put it off until now. So I, I don't know where it'll go with her. I don't feel like we have any more to offer. We've offered everything. I've talked to their construction person, Edmund Hart, um, talked after the meeting and I talked with the pastor after the meeting, again, offering. And then I offered again to this fundraising woman that you know, there were things that could be done or could be looked at. So I had the feeling she was gonna go back to the committee, the church committee and talk to, to them, but I don't know where it stands. And, and I think she knows that there's a lot more funds available for restoration as mm -hmm. opposed to uh, yes, rebuilding a new non-conforming tower. Because or, Maine Preservation actually got in touch with us with the committee and said, what's happening with that church? We've heard that they're going to demolish the tower and you know, there's money for restoration, but there's no money for, you know, we have money for restoration, but we don't have money for that. A so a lot of times it's it's a it's a little group within the organization that you know comes in and nobody has done anything for five years and they mm -hmm. come in and they sweep in with this totally different thing, which is we're going to tear it down, and and it's it's what you're describing is the exact scenario. They don't really have the figures, mm -hmm. and but the other people because they haven't been able to raise the money, they don't really even know that they should have comparable figures. Well, that's what I feel like the congregation yeah. probably doesn't have all the information that they need. But they're saying this person this person has come in and they're going to get this done, mm -hmm. and we haven't gotten it done. And that's where it's it's just a shame that they don't have you know access to more information. Didn't and I wish that there was some publicity about it, but I don't feel like it's our committee's responsibility to go out and make a judgment. I mean, we would be making a judgment by exposing mm -hmm. this. I mean, some right. some way it needs to so get out is, there in the public. Because I said to her, the, she said, well, you know, the church steeple they earned more money than they went out for. The Congregational Church recently had a fundraiser and they got a lot of money. So she said, I'm trying to do my due diligence to see is there money in the community? And I said, well, that kind of answers your question, doesn't it? If, Maybe there's a cooperative op-ed, you know, you know, in the same spirit of the article you wrote, you know, that celebrates the architecture and the building that could kind of be a fundraising recruitment tool. That if they were a part of that, 
but the congregation has to want to do it. Yeah. We can't. Yeah. We can't. Make but did, is that, did, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. Did but, you, what did you say? The, I said the congregation is fed up. Oh, fed it's up. It's like, yeah, it, take it away. And that is, that's just such a, I just wish there was, like, can I talk to this fundraising woman or do you have any way to get in touch with her? Mm -hmm. Because yep. I'd be really, really happy to talk to her because it's a very, very similar thing to what I was dealing with. Yes, I'll give point. you her name. Um, yeah. She's, I think she's a summer resident here because mm -hmm. I know she belongs to the Garden Club, but she works out of Washington, D.C. Is so, it Rosalie? Has mm -hmm. I can't think of her name. Is it Rosalie, who's on this committee, mm -hmm. also part of that church? Yeah. Okay. She is. In a big way? Yes. She is, but she kind of stepped back. She um, accused herself. Yeah, she but she can be herself. herself. Shouldn't right. she be, I mean, I, I get that she's recusing herself and that's fine, but she might be able to. I think so you have provide to ask her just right for her to feel comfortable about. No, I, I, I think what you're saying is some, kind of some I mean, insider more areas that, that we don't realize. Like, I know we're dealing with the same thing at the historical society and it's, and I know that there is some overlap in the leadership. Um, we're also looking for new board members, by the way. Um, we'd love to have I think any I've heard of you. That yeah. um, but really, I mean, there's this, we have this roof situation, a couple of buildings over there. And I mean, it's literally the most historic building in all of Camden and Rockport, mm -hmm. technically on the Rockport side, but um, I think we'd even entertain moving it to Camden if we need to save it. <laughs> but um, it's like, there's, it, it's hard to get people to, maybe there's much, there's probably the right combination of money for all of these things, but we keep drawing down our endowments because it's kind of like what was just described. Somebody comes in like, we just need to do this. And so it's like, mm -hmm. all right, well, we have this one quote from this contractor and we, you know, if we don't do it now and it's like another you know, $40,000. And then somebody says, oh, you know, it's, there are grants, um, <clears throat> but I think probably so the people in the, at the Episcopal church are feeling like, oh, there are all of these needs everywhere. Um, we can't even get the roof to stop leaking at the historical society. And now they're trying to, you know, the historic resources committee is trying to force us to keep this tower when the community isn't even coming up with the money that we need to keep the Conway house from, you know. Well, I think, I think it wouldn't hurt though if Anne contacted the fundraiser. Because she sounds like she's open. I mean, that's not a, oh, much yeah. of a push. Yeah. And I guess what I'm trying to say, too, is that we would love some, some of this help before it gets to this point. Um, We'd like to know about it before it gets to that point. Like, find, you know, if, if this committee could come up with, like, a resource guide that could be given to organizations like this, like, these are all the grants and their deadlines, or, you know, these are the funding opportunities available. Mm. Yep. Well, anyway, um, and I'll give you her name and okay. number as soon as I get home. Great, thank you. Uh, moving on, the Curtis Island update. Yeah, uh, so as I mentioned, the town has put in 55,000 to replace the roof on the caretaker's house. Uh, one of the, we, we met uh, actually this week to figure out why the price then jumped to like over 100,000 and know how to simply say it but the roof as it was put up has some very some copper edging along the edges that the shingles butt up against and that uh, and there's a crown molding so if this is the crown molding going up the, the piece of copper uh, we call it uh, like flashing flashing it comes up it's custom made it, it goes up, it covers part of the crown molding. It's a very, very mm. well constructed and intricate thing. Intricate, yeah. So it covers it. So and to retain the historic feature of it, you don't rip that off and put up a, a new crown molding that you would buy down at the hardware store here. And so what we discovered, you know, just yesterday is the increased cost is around all of that special work that has to be done. Mm -hmm. And can that all be done this year? Uh, initially, the feeling is no, but what we can do is order all of that, do a temporary fix on the roof, 
order all of that stuff, use this year's money to order the roofing, have everything in place to go first thing next year. About so, what, how does it break down crudely in terms of labor versus material? Like I think the 55 say cover the half and half, maybe, okay. I, I don't know. But, but right now there's gonna be kind of two temporary fixes. One's going to be, um, there was a temporary fix from that December storm. Um, and some of that has come loose, and that was basically a protective paper to shed water, not a paper, but a material. And I, I was out there a couple of weeks ago, and that's a little loose. So that's going to be repaired right away. Um, on the 16th of August, um, FEMA is coming to do a, to look, they're going to look at the island, they're probably going to look at some of the other things. But so there could be some money and resources there. And so for us to go and replace the roof right now, it's going to say, hey, this isn't much. For them to see how that critical flashing and edging is on the roof and how you just don't do a simple repair um, or fit in some new shingles, um, they need to see that. So, so what, is, what is FEMA's interest? Um, in the island? Oh, because of all the expense that was created during the December 22nd storm. And so, so the town apparently, I guess, has applied to FEMA or, okay. and, and they declared this, I think in a disaster area at, at some level, didn't they, after the storm? Yeah, so it's, they, it's a qualifying storm. So municipalities can keep track of all of the expenses. That's how we just got the um, public landing, the wharf, um, enough of that damage was caused by the storm. Um, and the, they usually don't decide until a few months later whether um, whether there's gonna be a federal um, declaration or not. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so so finding out what mm -hmm. of this could, that needs to happen yeah. at Curtis Island could be attributable to the storm. I didn't realize that, the, that they had done that. So was that something that you were involved had in? Done what? like added that to the list of damage for the oh, apparently I, I haven't been involved although i talked with audra a while back um and i think they were thinking of doing it but apparently it's been done i don't know it would be good to see what was submitted to fema regarding mm. oh there were probably pictures and I, I wasn't it's a really involved. detailed thing that they have to keep track of mm -hmm. um so I'm glad to hear that maybe it would have been Parks and Rec that did that or I, I don't know. It would be good to know what was submitted to them exactly so that we could be consistent. Um, <laughs> we did get a bunch of money for the public landing and really not some of that was damage that really had already been done. Um, but you had to redo it. I mean, basically. Have to redo it. Yeah. yeah, it was really good for everybody actually, but it, it was what happened with the storm because we it was a funding source that would not have been available yeah. to us. So um so anyway that's that's where we are there. Um Michael you, Johnson. Yeah Michael and so Johnson. Michael Johnson he is he's connected he was connected with the American boathouse the rebuild on that and a lot of the lighthouses on the coast of Maine and he's with the Maine Historic Preservation Commission. That's the state SHPO organization. Um, so he came oh, about what, two week? or three weeks ago. Not that bad. one nice day we had. So <laughs> I took him out to the island. We circled the island. We went on the island. We went on to, into every building or we looked at every building. And I wanted to get his, uh, his cut on what it would take and what he sees as the condition. And so he's working on a report. Uh, Two years ago, Stephanie, you probably know, know this, but we did a uh, conditions assessment mm -hmm. with Gartley and Dorsky and uh, another- uh, This committee. This committee, we we asked that, because we were going out to grants and all the grant people said, you need to tell us what's wrong, not just with pictures, but with kind of an engineering- it Has uh, to be an official report. I, yeah, an official report. So anyway, mm -hmm. we got that. And they outline really everything that needs to be improved or changed or new roofs and getting rid of some rot and uh, on all of the four structures. So I sent that to Michael Johnson. He wanted to see it and then he'll, he'll build off that. 
to end. And the reason that we wanted oh. to involve him is because he holds the keys to a lot of state grant money. Mm -hmm. And so we thought he needs to see it for himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's a good resource when, as we start to make repairs, he's a good resource to um, say, hey, this is in compliance, this is out of compliance. And since the town owns those structures and they've signed agreements that they will keep them historically uh, appropriate and uh, use the federal standards. So this is it's kind of an important thing. So we're looking forward to getting uh, that report. But I didn't realize that, that there are agreements that the town has signed saying mm -hmm. that we'll yeah. back yeah. in. The whatever. town's basically yeah. responsible for it all. And That's for, really and for maintaining. important information. Yeah. yeah. That and, was back in what year when they took it over? 96? Uh, yeah, no? 97. 97. Yeah. And so the town took control of the, uh, the light tower in 97, but took control of everything else in 72. Uh, and they signed agreements for both times, and mm -hmm. we, have, we have those. It doesn't just say that we're going to take, you know, take responsibility for it or take on the liability. It says that we have to. Yeah, you have to you know, keep it, keep it up. Historically accurate and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know that that's even close to common knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, well um, we we kind of no. just. I we, think that's a Ron and I did a lot of research on a lot of the historic documents, and that's. Pretty, it's pretty clear it. there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, because yeah, some people are going to be like, well, all right, you know, enough with the nostalgia. We mm -hmm. need to just, you know, se secure this and get it done in a way that's going to keep the water out and none of this fussy yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's a little stronger than that. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. that's that would be a really good thing to just kind of keep hammering. Yeah. And I'm, I'm working on, um, I've been working on it for a while, but a presentation to the, the new board about the island and Okay. You know, and about the foundation. The, that's and really some of the requirements and what's the nature of owning the island and what does the town sign up for. And so I've been working on that for a while and just trying to get it ready for when it's timely to bring to the board. Okay. So that would be, we're supposed to be um, uh, like creating lists of things that are important to get on. A, future agendas and it's, mm -hmm. there's no promise of you know, right away or mm -hmm. but um that'd be a good thing for for us to know so that it can get fit in mm -hmm. sometime. It, is so, this something that should be done before the end of june because of the fiscal year no no we don't need to get on next year's budget well we've already mm -hmm. done the 2025 oh, it's already done yeah, yeah. yeah we the, that's the thing with our town government forms okay. yeah. very far in advance. Yeah. So one other thing that uh, Michael Johnson's assessment is this place is in great shape. Uh, <laughs> compared relative, to technically, relative, yeah, relative compared speaking. to others. Yeah. Yeah. So. He said the Coast Guard, when they left some, we just read one today where they dumped the Fresnel lens into the into bay. Into the ocean uh, when they um, left the island. Um, <laughs> and a lot of times they they left and just they hauled right. stuff they gave stuff away whatever and uh, I, I recently wrote an article i don't know if any of you saw it about the yeah. three bells and yeah. in, in, in camden you know we've got the bell right here on the town landing yeah. and so it's kind of a mystery where, where are these bells and where's the bell that was on curtis island and so i wrote this article it was in the different media uh last week the week before and I got a call or a text mm -hmm. saying, I know where that where <laughs> Camden's bell is. Yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Anonymous. And so, and she sent a picture of it. <laughs> a picture. And so there should be a follow-up story in the in the media. He I wrote it yesterday. I, where I is wrote. it? Did somebody steal and so it? It's on yeah. Deer Island. If you Isle. ever want to see it again. It's on Deer <laughs> Isle. <laughs> Deer Isle, Deer Isle Stonington. Of course. In front of their historic it, society and museum. Seriously, it's museum. sitting right there. And it says Camden Lighthouse mm, yeah. Bell. Well, it's because 
Deer Isle isn't that far. No. Oh, so right. It's pretty yeah. cool. That's but, where but what happened that water. <laughs> when <laughs> don't even have to land it anymore. It's so funny. Oh my god. I cannot. Right I now. think we I well, say we take but it. But when back. the Coast Guard, yeah. yeah, we have a night crew going all over there <laughs> by boat. Dark, you have to wear black. Oh, okay. yeah. Of course, it does weigh a thousand pounds, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a thousand pounds. But anyway, there it is. And it's, and I have described it from historic documents. And yes. right, there it is. Oh my God. It. It's and so it even nice. has a plaque that it was oh a Camden. Yeah. yeah. So the one that we have here on the town landing, it's about the same size. It's a little bit different, but it's a thousand pound bill. Mm -hmm. And so that bell, I don't know where that came from. I mean, that's what we'll that try to so figure cool. out. But anyway, it's kind of <laughs> kind of fun. Maybe we can negotiate with them a trade of some sort. Trade, trade, yeah. Yeah. trade yeah. bells. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Our, um, we'd love to see the real, the, the original one back on the island. Wouldn't that be fun? That would, yeah. be, that would be so fun. Just a goal. Mm -hmm. Don't tell Jenner and ruin his thunder in the paper. What's <laughs> right. What would what, you say? I said, don't tell Jenna because she'll go take picture and mm. research it and get oh, it out before you're. <laughs> well, Jenna is also on the board of the Historical Society in Kendra oh. Rock. Yeah. I haven't so, seen her for ages. I'm like, yeah. well, you, you could join the Historical Society board and get to see her more often. <laughs> well, um, I belong well, she's to a writer. Society. She's a writer too. Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, okay, one other thing um, on the island. Um, so, this year there's a and I think I, I may have mentioned this, but there's uh, the caretaker is uh, Sarah Thorpe, and she's the assistant or associate harbor master here. And she and her family are there three to four days a week. And, and so they're kind of doing the caretaker role as an interim. And uh, we see it as an interim, you know, until we decide you know, what's going to happen, how's the, or the town? You know, what, what do we want there? Do we want a <laughs> weekly rotating? Do we want seasonal? What, what do we want for caretaking? And, and especially through this next construction phase, if we, over the next couple of years, if there's a lot of construction, you know, there's some different needs there, but that's aside from the point. And Is it habitable and during the construction? Part, Will it be habitable during the construction? Well, depending on what's being, mm -hmm. Done. I mean, during the roof, I suppose it could be, but uh, in anything internal. So anyway, that's uh, th that piece is just on hold. It's it's for this year, and uh, and the, th the final thing is is a group of us that have started a foundation to raise money to help the town fulfill its requirements to raise some significant money to bring that up to the standard. What you see out there now was built in 1896. Uh, all the original structures from 1835 are gone. So everything there was as it was built in 1896. And it remains really as it was. It hasn't been messed up. It, it's a classic uh, example of keeping it kind of the way it was from the beginning. So. So anyway, we've, we've incorporated with the state as a nonprofit. Uh, I just finished a 501c3 application. Uh, we don't have that status yet, but we will. And one of the things we'll be doing is working with the town and to coming up with some kind of a memorandum of understanding or agreement in terms of how, the, you know, how this money will be used or how it could be used, so. But you haven't done a press release yet. That, yeah, and that's the other thing. We're, because we're, we're kind of going after some serious money, we don't want a whole lot of public information about it. Yeah. And, they'll, and that will come. You know, that will come. Just a lot, of, a lot of moving parts. Michael, yeah. I, I think the work you're doing this is so amazing. It's, just, it's such a jewel. Mm. And the work you're doing is incredible. So thank, thank you. Thanks. I mean, it's an incredible place, and it's just so close here. And everyone recognizes it. If you look on most people's yeah. banners, there's a picture of Curtis Island. Yeah. And either it's on the island or looking down to the bay, whatever. It's magical. And every tour that heads out, you know, full yeah, of tourists, the it's a major feature of, the, of that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Great. Uh, moving on to the historic fire district plaque. Oh, is that next? Yeah. Uh, Mount Patty. Okay. You know, no. these things move so slowly. I, I, <laughs> we've passed another step. This uh, talked with uh, Sunshine. Can't think of her last name. She's the park manager. Park manager. Yeah. So which again, this is Mount Batty. Uh, Mount yeah. Batty. Yeah. Is that what you wanted? Yeah, I, I misspoke. You're right. Okay. And um, she um, she had told me to go. You know that we had had approval, but then she had me fill out another form for the state, which I did, and I hadn't heard back from her. So yesterday I called and she said, "Oh, that's been approved. Haven't I sent you a message? You know, I've been waiting." But in the meantime, I talked with Bob uh, Williams out at Brooks Memorial, and he's willing to um, if we have a bronze plaque made for. Um, the Mount Batty Memorial Tower. Um, he is willing to set it into the stone that Sunshine has offered us, which is great because then we don't have to pay for anything. And it looks like this. I think I'll just pass this around. Here's the stone that's photoshopped the plaque on top of it. So everything is set to go now. And I just didn't feel comfortable ordering the bronze plaque at about $300. Yeah from the company until I got the state approval. And so this week she said, yes, you have oh, state awesome. approval. So yeah. basically it's going to look like a rock like that with the flag on it, just saying it's on the National Register of Historic Places and we'll decide with the state when the stone is done in the fall, they're going to be doing new walkways and pathways at the top of Mount Batty to be road. ADA uh, compliant. And they're going to redo the road, and the stone will be placed somewhere near the tower. So that stone is not an existing stone at the site right now. They'll be brought it's in. So down at the base of the mountain. Uh, okay. The stones at the base of the mountain. Yeah. So yesterday she said Bob had asked if if they could place the stone on a table or some kind of platform for him to work on. And yesterday she said that wouldn't be a problem that they would put it up so he doesn't have to be working on his knees on the ground. So everything's in place. Now it's like, when does Bob have time? Uh, we'd like to have everything in place in October because the governor is coming for some big unveiling of uh, new projects that have been done in the parks all over the state. And I guess they're going to, she's going to be at the top of Mount Batty October sometime. So we'll keep you informed on that. Would it be overkill to try and do some kind of ribbon cutting to do for, for this when she's there? Or? Oh no, I think we could work that in mm -hmm. to be part of it. That's this. That'd be fantastic. So basically, the, remember it looks it's going to look kind of like this, but we changed the wording a little. That's what it's going to be ten by fourteen and on the rock, but we changed the wording to Mount Batty Memorial Tower because that's the way it's on the National Register. Um, so now we can finally call with the, the people we've been working with in the bronze black area and say, go for it, we're ready. It just takes so much time. So then I'll just kind of move right on into the you know, historic fire district plaque. Um, such good news that the Camden National Bank agreed to let us put that sign on the corner of the lot where people can stand and look down Main Street. She said the only hang up is they have to talk with the HVAC people who put the sidewalk, um, heated, heated sidewalk. sidewalk in to make sure that when we put the posts down, we don't hit any of their pipes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I just talked to them about the fact that they used to have a bicycle rack by the door. I hope this doesn't foul up the no, no, it won't be closer. The, the no. back, the side door. It won't be by the okay. door. It's, I mean, I, I don't mind. I just thought it'd be nice yeah. if they put it back because they disappeared it for several years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's so that's good news. So we can move forward. Now that. we move on a, a granite like a seven by seven granite post oh, nice. with a small platform and 
Mike is working with Ken right now to get better resolution pictures. So the plaque will actually have a couple of pictures on it. Do you have the text for that as well? I'm the, sorry. Do you have the text for that plaque as well? Has that been finalized? Uh, we do, and we cut it down. Um, um, we had a lot of text <coughs> on it, and recently we cut it down to some more essential. And um, I'll run. I'll I'll send that email Great. out, and because we had approved it before, oh, okay. this committee approved the wording before. Okay. But then we think in the. Uh, I don't know, just in consideration that people aren't going to stand there forever. Just give me the basic facts. <laughs> yeah. So we, we cut mm -hmm. it down quite a bit. So I'll send it out again. Great. And we would recommend, you know, we would actually welcome comments. That's great news. Okay. Um, anything on the uh, home marker uh, program? On anything? The, the home marker program? No, I think we should put that on the agenda for another meeting because I haven't had any requests. We've changed all the brochures in the two locations where we have them at the town office and here at the History Center. We replaced all the old brochures with updated wording and updated pricing, um, but there haven't been any recent requests, so maybe we sometime on our agenda, we can talk about how can we revitalize that program? Do we want to revitalize that program? Well, people have forgotten about it. We had the COVID. We didn't want to keep going around. Right. So it's yeah. sort of. Um, getting back to the, the fire district, um, can we revisit sometime maybe having a website or a place to go so that you could put a email address so that people can get further information mm -hmm. about and, and that just in particular a, you know, a, a website on the historic markers of Canada. Oh. Yeah. I've seen the QR codes around like on the curb outside the library something like that and maybe again that's that's the well, we had talked about easy. this yeah. two meetings ago okay. I think. Yeah. I don't think those QR codes are operational. Did you oh, try really? Them? I haven't tried them, no. Because uh, we have to have a site for people to go to. And <laughs> someone started it here in the library, and then it sort of died uh, later on. So I don't think it's been kept up to date. Who's the webmaster for the town website? Because you know we've got our committee description there on the town website. It seems like that could be expanded to include some historical information, but yeah. how would we go about doing that? You can ask Janice to, I mean, as, as long as it's not like radical stuff, just, just basic information, um, there's lots of the committees asked to have things put on the website, links to reports and, you know, in the same place that your minutes go. Um, there's, we have limited, capacity staff wise in terms of like a lot of website special requests but every every so often saying you know here's here's the text to copy and paste um that's very very doable so let's say we had a page of background information on on the fire would that be more appropriate for the library or more appropriate for the town website would you think well, well, I know when I talked to Ken about the walking tour and the possibility of using QR codes for that, uh, he that that system was operated within the library, mm. um, and he was open to um, to doing something similar if we wanted to. Okay, and and it doesn't sound like it's a lot of data; it's just a list of houses or a map or something well in that case it's really just hosting a pdf it's really not a I mean, large we can generic, usually host right. pdfs yeah. that, like yeah. the things that you guys have created like the document like the walking tours and the um having those under uh, on the committee page mm -hmm. just a link to a pdf mm -hmm. um that's yeah. very very doable mm -hmm. but yeah. th there may be things that make sense with the library is, is there too. some system of allotting space on that website on the whole thing the committees could say well you've got this much you can do 
you could do this many entries with links, and then they could kind of decide instead of having to go through this please put it on thing, and then it doesn't happen. Well, I mean, not that we were are you requesting a lot that things be put on the website and have it not happen. Sorry, I'm not. Are you finding that that the the committee is requesting to have things put on the website and it's not happening? Well, I tried to get things on the past over, over a period of, and actually the website was being rebuilt so that it would explain it. But I'm just thinking it's just like, it's kind of budget, you know, a space budget mm -hmm. on the website and the committee had an idea of how much. That's not the issue. The thing that would hold things up isn't isn't like, well, we don't know if we want to let the historic resources committee use 50 megabytes or not. <laughs> that isn't the slowdown. It's the, the it's the it's when people it's the it's the posting it. It's it's you know, there's certain things that are very easy to do quickly for somebody to say, okay, we're just copying and pasting this onto an existing page when the things that really slow it down are, are requests for features. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I think- You know, we want to have people be able to sign up for a historic resource committee, email alerts, things like that are going to be like, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. But there's no um, copying and pasting of text on an existing page is, is, is easy. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes they just for, forget. Well, um, specifically, I was trying to get the energy programs that the library had done there are four of them. I'll link to them because the library has them. And, and this would have been for the energy committee, which doesn't exist at the moment. <laughs> the backdoor way of bringing back the energy committee. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, that is, well, you know, there's a, there's a part of the website that has a link to reports. Um, but that is hard to, to I, yeah, I mean, Okay, so energy, so far. No. that's that I can't speak to the energy committee and the but for you know exist and I doubt that it's like a you know a plan to institutional resistance no, to that no, it's no, just more like no. where do we put it or it's, it's, yeah. but this but when stuff that the committee's doing um, can if it's just a matter of being able to copy and paste things you can definitely have things added to the mm -hmm. you know you guys have a page on oh, the right. website I, I never knew that we could put things on okay. it. It sounds oh, like you're yeah. just up against some administrative thing but if we it's make it time, if we it. make it easy then mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's just yeah. easier if it's every so often the committee says something and you know you can copy me and Janice and um yeah, yeah that'll be so an Allison time. plus Janice is the magic well you know it's different for yeah. somebody else to come over yeah Allison. I mean I, I don't think that's the magic no, I'm anything, push, I'm but, but um, yeah, sometimes it's just a matter of reminding. If you have, you know, send it to Janice, uh, copy Audra if you want, copy me. If it do, don't hear back, circle back in a little bit. And, um, okay. Yeah. Did you, did you, excuse me? It sounded like you wanted to say something, no? Oh, oh no, no, I was, no, I was okay. talking here though. The, the Historical Society, has a, does have a place on the town um, website. Historical Society? The Cameron Rock Oh, we have our own website, but that's not on the town website. Yes, this this came from the... Oh, there was a link? Yeah. I mean, our I believe community it. community and then listed somewhere. In there. Yeah, I mean, once in a, you know, there's like legacy stuff where somebody at some mm -hmm. point was like, you know, we should have a, a list of all the, you know, community organizations that people might be looking for, mm. and somebody must have done that. Well, that's what that in you know, our community, and that's the whole list of various things. The libraries. Yeah, so that's somebody things. decided to do that. That's not. I mean, it's that's how some things get done. Is somebody was like, hey, can you add this? Oh, somebody. <laughs> you know, it could have been Janice like ten years ago. It could have been. No, it's newer. I think it's newer. Well, I think as we develop what we want to perhaps post on there, we can kind of make that happen. Oh, yeah, you definitely, you definitely can. And sometimes, you know, if you can link to other blogs or different, you know, different things. We have, you know, we've had committees in the past have gotten so ambitious that like the former Conservation Commission um, really needed to start their own nonprofit organization because 
it's like, you know, you want to be able to fundraise through their, their, their page on the website, things like that. It, it just gets, it just gets too much, but you guys are, I don't think are approaching. means you change the world. So yeah. Could I go back to the start house yes. black mm -hmm. for a minute? I wondered if the, there was ever anything, um, any consideration of measuring what the impact is of having a historic house plaque because um, I was under the impression that people who bought the house next door to me, I had worked with my neighbor because there were brothers in law who built the two houses in getting a historic house plaque. And I was, I was under the impression that that actually was of interest to the people who bought the house. My house, for example, we, we rent our Barnage apartment out to, um, to people who come to the wood school. And invariably anyone who comes to our door, you know, because you know, they're introducing themselves or whatever, will come back and say, wait a minute, I wanna, I wanna find out about this. I yeah. saw that you had this historic house Me too. Yeah. yeah, and so, um, I mean, for one thing, you know, the marketing part of me goes, well, you know, if you go to sell your house, this might, you know, have a little, in, you know, oh, yeah. it is hard to, it's hard to say that without mm -hmm. having any kind of data. Mm -hmm. But I just wonder if, if that, you know, if you think, well, I don't know if this is, this program is doing any good, is there a way that we can measure what kind of impact it's having? And I just wanted to throw it's an that interesting out there. Thought, yeah. I also am surprised to hear that there hasn't been any uptick since the election, because I know you were dishing brochures at the election. I think it's energy. Uh, it's what? Energy to get out and solicit and put the word in the paper and explain what it's good for. Or, yeah. I mean, I don't know if we can offer assistance with to help people do the research on their houses, Coach, because you know I would be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people have no clue mm -hmm. where to start, how to where to start, and and then you know it makes them even more um, uh, interested in and supportive of what we're trying to do yeah. in terms of start preservation. I totally, we've done a lot of that. I have done a lot of people, people uh, yeah, uh, looking for people, so but they we haven't really you. offered it, you know. Yeah, but. Well, I would love to see us do something with the historical society, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they could help us do research, do research too. You, you know, right. teach them how to use the, um, the, isn't it fairly automatic to go, you go and find the earliest deed and do. Yeah, but it's hard. It's, 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 hard. it's not as, it's, it's not easy. easy. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And you can't look up an address. You have to find out who owns it now. Yeah. Who they bought it from, and you have to keep stepping back and back. And then, and, and, the and then they, they get handled the if you go back. But the which decade? Mm -hmm. And, the worst, and yeah. the worst part is that they separate the lots. They start with a big lot, oh, and yeah. then yeah. Some you know when you get sure. back there, it's like okay, well they sold that <coughs> lot, but did they sold the lot with the and house in, on it or without that? And they're in, what, so, what is that? What is that? So you do have to be schooled you know? in how to use. I think our the house must have come with an estimate of when some of you know, must have somebody already done, done yours, yeah, because we've always had it well, it's yeah, within this, you know, within this five years or something. And the and the directories that the that you know that we looked at, remember yeah. the closet, that's yeah. they are not accurate in terms no. of no. well, no. actually, what no. if you go to the Axis GIS, that is totally inaccurate, yeah, as to when they, they say the Jacobs Avenue houses were built in, 19, in, 19, in 1930, they were built in 1960. Well, when they didn't know, you they know, put 1900. They, 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 they put 1900. So yeah. anyway, yeah. it's a big job. So you have to you go can't to tax just do it, give it to somebody, anybody to do, and people, people can't do it themselves. And, you know, I've done a lot of them for people, and mm -hmm. then they haven't bought plaques, which is fine. I didn't, you know, mm -hmm. there's no pressure mm -hmm. to buy a plaque, but I have done quite a few for people. <laughs> It and would then, be good to keep track, like to have yeah. a place where people can go. So all of you know, all of the research that has been done well, is yeah. linked I have somewhere. been giving Ken uh, copies of everything that I've done. But um, in the in the codes and assessing office, or that you know, the places where people are forced to go oh. when they have, mm -hmm. you know, when they buy a new house or when they, you know, because yeah. people have to be interested to go to Ken. But they all, you know, so maybe that's a good idea. I haven't really thought about that. Make it with a town. Nice we could actually even have links yeah. in the access in the online thing with the GIS thing. Didn't uh, Jennifer, what's her last name on High Street? She wrote a guide to mm -hmm. 
uh, research. research. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 On the, on the yeah. library has a really good yeah. walk through. Yeah. Yeah. So that would all be good stuff, actually, for the page on the website. Well, it definitely, that's why I think we should put it on for an agenda item, because we can talk mm -hmm. about how can we reach out to the community, advertise, blah, 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 get organized and help do it and maybe connect with the historical society. I think it's a great that idea. would be part of the, the preservation ordinance, because yes. in all the ones I've read, there, there's there's specific paragraphs right. addressing and that. see that's the part of the ordinance that I am drafting right now. That's the question I have when we get together. Like we have put these Camden landmark plaques mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. people's houses, mm -hmm. but how are they, where do they fit into the ordinance? Are they going to come under our, our mm -hmm. ordinance? You know, well, I think that I, I've regulations heard, or not, <laughs> as you said, you know, when people see your plaque, they get excited. And they, where do I get one? I've also heard the flip side of that is <clears throat> if I get this plaque, am I now going to be heavily be regulated? Right. Yes. And so that's why mm -hmm. we really need to talk about it, because everything that's in the historic district or has a national register plaque, they will come under our new ordinance, you know, because they're nationally recognized either as an individual building or as a district. But we've been doing our local program, which is the Camden Historical Landmark plaque. And we haven't done, I mean, we've, we've made sure that they have retained the basic look of what they looked like when they were built. But if they have an addition on it, that's okay. As long as it's, you know, didn't alter the whole front. And, you know, do you know what I'm saying? So we've allowed for some variances. So when we, get to writing an ordinance, are we going to include all of the landmark places and expect them to be under the ordinance? Or so not? Yeah. We, well, we can talk about that. At yeah, the he's, he's getting it. Okay, sorry. Uh, one last uh, thought on this, um, and yeah. we'll get to it when we talk about it further, but I think, you know, another maybe issue is you, you've talked about how many houses or just putting up their own established year plaques. And I think that's something we have to talk about. I don't know if we have any authority to, you know, yeah. talk about that or approach people to move them away from that to the official plaque, but I think that might be. Well, I think there are a lot, I think you have to allow for them to put their own plaques. It's a way on. they can protect their houses because the town isn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it gives the impression that, that this is a house that you care about. And so maybe someone who thinks they're going to tear it down might at least think, well, I'll keep it looking at the office. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we can. I mean, we're not taking care of the rest of the Although I see what you mean. Because yeah. they're paying for this exactly. plaque. So why not just pay for exactly. ours? Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. We'll yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, you can always knock on a door and say, hey, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we do have research an official, yeah. Yeah. Is that your real? Um, yeah. Anyway. OK, moving on. Uh, so our preservation ordinance update. Um, I've got our next meeting on the 22nd at 9 a.m. Is that still mm -hmm. correct? I don't know if we've officially scheduled it at a time. I know we talked about the 22nd. Um, do we need to book that or? Um, what was that date again? August 22nd, I think is the day we threw out at our last meeting. Does that sound right? Mm, I, I have a, I, I personally have a problem. That's the day my kids are coming from um, to visit and we do pick them up at the airport. Right. We'll talk offline yeah. and set a, okay. a date that we can all make, but- um, Do it the day before. Yeah, is there anything to discuss about that? Now I know we've got kind of left our last meeting with people with their own to-dos and uh, moving forward on the drafting. I don't know if it makes sense to talk about that now and just wait for that next meeting, but is there anything anyone wants to talk uh, about now? Well, you were- um, you were working on something, then you were going to pass it to me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Chris was working on his. And you're I'm working, working on mine. Yeah. So I think until we uh, re. I'm not just to read a line before because I have so many questions and yeah. I'm not sure that. Okay. It's, well, I don't know. I got, I mean, Wherever you are in your process. Okay. Yeah. I can distribute it, but it's. Can I unplug my computer from the power strip? I may have. 
Uh -oh. Show the owl. Owl seems to. And you, you, you missed that meeting, but we'd be glad to give you a, <laughs> a, a section to work with. For sure. I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> because we're just at the beginning oh, stage. The beginning yeah. stage. So I don't feel. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I mean, I'm, I've, I've looked at ordinances because you know my mother wrote one in South Carolina, and it's, it's a very ticklish thing. You know, like I said, that town just did the commercial area, and it was just mainly about what it looks like in the front and signs. When you start dealing yeah. with, with. Um, private that? residences mm -hmm. it gets a lot harder, and so I, I kind of advocate doing that, doing you know the central district, and then spreading out, you know. <laughs> but if you try to hit everybody at the same time, I think merchants are less. I don't know why I think this, but I, mean, I think merchants are less likely to to. Um, they're used to being regulated more, I guess, to give you the pushback that I think private homeowners do. And well, one thing you don't, you know, you don't want don't people. Know that. <laughs> yeah, and that was the opposite back in 2011. Really? It was all the shopkeepers who gave the pushback. Okay, see, I think them is being more regulated, but yeah. but I think that you know when you start trying to get people to um, recognize the stark importance of their houses and to want to you know proclaim it with a plaque or whatever. Or just even I, the, the people I've talked to on Jacobs Avenue about being in the Stark District, they all think that means I'm not going to be able to change my house. Right. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I mean, even my own neighbors on Pearl Street will be like, right. does that mean you can't do anything to your house? Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's why um, I said, you know, we're putting these landmark things in houses and we have to decide, you know, What's the scope of the yeah. territory that we want to cover? I don't think Mass, we can. Yeah. And of course, the start, like National Historic District designation does not mean that you can't do anything. Right. I mean, it's it's honorary yeah. completely. But the trouble that you have dealing with people who who look at that and say, don't put that on my church, don't put that on my my house because I'm not going to be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. And then you have to, and, and I, I went through a huge, the, the diocese, the Episcopal Diocese of South Carolina went out and hired somebody who came back and said, as an expert and said, um, we're not going to be able to do anything to that church if it has this designation. Mm -hmm. I'm sending the Marines mm -hmm. off of the yeah. you know yeah. National Park Service website and they're, they're saying, well, no, our experts said, wasn't expert well this is the ongoing challenge for business yeah. just some public yeah. facing information yeah. Yeah. positioning and, yeah. At, yeah at the same time there were so many people at the uh, at the table uh, on uh, election day that were really interested in mm -hmm. preservation yeah mm -hmm. i mean look how many signed up yeah That's crazy they don't want things to change so there's no well, i think the vote on, on the marijuana thing was a lot of people were voting because they, there's a, a quality to the character of the game. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that communication would help us a lot. <laughs> yeah. If we okay. if we could get the message like out. Understood what you mean and what yeah. you don't mean. Yeah. So right. They're not so nervous about well, it. Well I think we've all been hyper aware of this side yeah. of this yeah. ordinance and we'll just keep working on it as yeah. we draft and and yeah. Work on our communication when we know what we're actually about. Exactly. Well, I was, as you were talking before, I was thinking maybe we should put a blurb in the Camden Herald or something. Oh, the committee met this week, and this is the project. These are the projects we're working on, and so it's not a big surprise. Not a big surprise. Some people don't even know we exist. So. Oh, so many people said that. Yeah, at the, at the yeah. polls well, that maybe, day. Maybe we know we, we doesn't have, have to be a big thing. Yeah. Just you know. Here's a little report. This is what we did this week. News from the HRC. Yes, little, right. Mm -hmm. right. Like in the old time newspapers when I used to say the Girl Scouts met and they talked about something. <laughs> no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And you, you knew they were there. Yeah. Well, this kind of feeds, I have it listed as other businesses. Um, <laughs> but I was wondering, you know, do we need to up our social media game? And this is kind of connected to that. Do, do we need to have our own? Um, Social media presence and where we could kind of, well, but that's, that's another discussion. That's another <laughs> yeah. discussion. Well, yeah, I that's think it's, I think it's important, and, mm -hmm. but it's going to take someone doing a lot of work to mm -hmm. make it happen, mm -hmm. and then to sustain it. It mm -hmm. just, I'm looking at you, B. Go on and. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Uh, but sticking to our agenda here, um, so I think we're good to move to new business. Um, so. 
the first thing I have listed here is officers, and I need some clarity here. I know that you had served as chair, mm -hmm. and is that the only official position? I know we've had rotating secretary, and what positions do we need to have filled, and what is the process for filling those, and when do we need to do that? Um, I'm not a member, but I would say I would recommend you become the chair. I'm just going to, I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you proved yourself too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. If you're but I, I think it's up to the, really the committee, you know, what you want to do. I think most do have chairs. Uh, how you manage minutes is up to the committee. Are there three officers, you know, in a traditional setup, secretary, treasurer, or is that not? No, treasurer. Mm -hmm. We don't need a treasurer. Mm -hmm. So just, and it, do we, I know you've rotated the secretary, but is it has there been like an, a permanent secretary or well, a permanent secretary is better? It is um, better, yeah, Some consistency uh, because it's just works better. But um, but if no one is willing to do that, we, <laughs> we can do what we've been doing, rotating. I, I'm willing to do it. I, I can type without looking at the computers. <laughs> well, good. You yeah. do a fantastic job, and I tell you. If you don't mind, that'd be fantastic. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I, it, I, it helps that we have it all recorded because I can go back and make sure I got it right. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to to be chair if that really is what the rest of you want. I, I will express, having lived in the town for two years, I feel a little funny about being chair of a historical uh, <laughs> committee. Um, but I would, of course, be just turning to all the people who have the expertise for the information that was needed for the committee and the position so well it's not like you have any power so don't exactly know. if it's just an organizational <laughs> thing i'm service. happy to, i'm happy to do this i i nominate a slate of officers for the historic resources committee to be chairperson uh chris Friden. Frieden. Frieden. <laughs> so you don't even know how to pronounce my name. <laughs> I've been pronouncing it correctly. I, mean, I know you. Correct. I'm just yeah. teasing. I'm just I keep correcting Mike. He calls you the, by the right name. I'm oh just my teasing. gosh. And, um, and Rhonda Reisner as secretary. Do we have a second? For second. a year anyway. I second. Okay. All those in favor? I mean, all those, all those in favor. favor. Say aye. Well, all those opposed? <laughs> Too late. Okay, great. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank um, you very much for yeah. being willing to do that. So to get some clarity then on our official membership, um, you know, I know that it's a three-year term and I have all the expiration dates of the members, but because I came in mid-year, am I considered a 26 member or a 25 member? And I know that you, you want to rotate uh the years do you, is there do you have any clarity on that i don't know i i can look back at those. okay we can, we can clarify that but as i have right now the our five members are me rhonda chris ann and rosalie with uh with pat yours one of the alternates i was an alternate and actually my term expired june 30th past past june 30th and um you know, I I might as well be an alternate again because I know I'm. This work is going to continue. Mm -hmm. But if you find somebody, two people who want to be on the committee, well, this list is so. I would love to try and find people yeah. to eventually, you know, yeah. come on because we're going to need people in the future. Yeah. And but those people said they were interested in our work, but. Are they really interested in being on the committee? Well, well they checked the box. It would be nice if they were. Can I see that? Yeah. Oh, they did check the box for. Yeah. For so what? what oh, okay. I I don't want to do this, you know, online, mm -hmm. um, because this is some personal information, what have you. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to talk about briefly a process for finding candidates because we have a lot of interest here. Mm -hmm. So well, I think please it would replace me. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think it would make sense for, I've distributed the list with everybody, and if everybody could go through it and maybe pick out a few people that you know and that you can vouch for that you think would be good candidates, then we can maybe offline discuss and extend invitations to a handful of people. I think it'd be a wrong move to, to just 
you know, mm -hmm. respond to everyone who, who signed up. Mm -hmm. But does anybody have a different idea of how we should find candidates? Does that, does that make that's sense? That's a great idea. Okay. And one of them I'm already going to tell you as soon as we close this meeting, which one she she is no, okay. she's checked both boxes. I know. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, so please look at the list and, and maybe send me people that you think are strong candidates and we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay, great. Um, all right. So I had, we're kind of moving through everything here on the agenda, but I had last two um, things listed here, the um, just some kind of more community outreach. And I think we should table that. And that should be something that we do talk about because I do think there's opportunities for either a newsletter or a blurb, uh, you know, a social media presence or even our own website. Um, but uh, I, I think there's more we could be doing to reach out to the community. And something I'm very interested in, I mentioned it before, is I would love to develop an archiving program where any person who's got a box of old photos of their house or of the town, I mean, who knows what's out there? If there were an easy way for them to archive with us, and that's a discussion I would obviously have with you, sure. but I would love to tap into what's out there that we don't know is out there uh, and, and what to do with it. Mark Ingram, the surveyor, who is the great, great grandson of the guy who built the Jacobs Avenue. He has an entire, like, it's almost like they built the top floor of this building. You know, you probably know his father had a barn that had all of this stuff in it. No. And, and his, I don't know, he has two siblings and they both said, you take it because you're the only person who has space. I mean, there's all the, his father made um, audio tapes and videotapes and, and they have no idea what to do with this. And I said, when he let me borrow some, I said, I'll go around looking, I was going to call you because I mean, and it's very, it's a lot of town districts. We're, we're in the midst of a generational change over the next 20 years and it'd be a shame to lose yeah. a lot of stuff. Um, so that's, that's a discussion for another time. But, okay, yeah. I have an item that yeah. relates to this. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. There's a house on High Street for sale right now, mm -hmm. which would make a fabulous history subject. <laughs> or historical society, you know, right at the top of um, High Street, uh, John um, John O'Connell's house. Mm -hmm. I think they're asking a million three. Mm -hmm. It's it's very big. It's big. It has a huge barn. Years ago, wow. Rosalie and I talked about how can we wow. find a place, you know, an additional place to the history center here wow. that would be big enough. But I don't have the energy or the wherewithal with Mike already working yeah. on the Curtis Island thing, but somebody's got to buy that house well, that's and a, give us a history center. Can, Pat, can I ask will him? You vote, will you? That's a mind blowing idea. Is that it something is that's good. ever been talked in our history of having a? A historical center? Well, or? Ken has no more space than the history center, and mm -hmm. there used to be a historical. Right, the, the CAHC, Camden Area History Center, it's at the foot of Union Street. Yeah. The foot of Union Street. Oh, is that what it was called? Camden Area History? Yes, a lot of our records still say CAHC because mm -hmm. the majority of it came home mm -hmm. here. Then the right. town sold it? You no, know, it was. It was um, supported by Charlie Colley. Yeah. And my understanding is that if you want to get something off the ground, you pay for it for three years. And if they can't support themselves after three years, then that's it. Then, then that's it. Right? Oh, that's what happened. You, you, you do have to prove your worth and, and do your own fundraising mm -hmm. in the nonprofit world after after three years. And so that was that. Was that. Okay. So I, I hate to throw <laughs> snow on the idea, but <laughs> it has been tried. It has been done. A really wonderful facility. It was beautiful. Beautiful it was collection. Beautiful, yes. It was beautiful. yes, but it was not sustainable um, at, at this level of support. It took it took a Mr. Carly to mm -hmm. support it. It was, it was like a shed building. Is behind the sort of mansion. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know which building it was because we weren't living here then, but we had been there. But some. Some Isn't way there's, there's got to be a way to get that. But also, if we're talking about gener generational legacies, maybe there is a way to to pull in contributions, well, private. Well, contributions. there is also a Cayman Airport Historical Society, so let's not reinvent the wheel. Mm. 
between. Well, they need a building to put all this. Yeah, that's in. right. That, they don't that, have that. Right. Right. We're in the same boat. Well, this sounds like another. Thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a fantastic <laughs> idea. Um, uh, sorry, I I just it's I love been that. bothering yeah, me yeah, that yeah. that house is sitting there. It's for sale. So what's in the cellar of the Camden Town Hall? Is that is there any empty space that's there? I hate to bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's sort of shabby, but there's storage places. No, we can't go over there. Upstairs. She You're said talking that. about the opera house? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they, if they could compress some of that material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The opera house? Yeah. Well, so I'm is there room there? Well, you know the opera house room. Really well. I had a tour of it once, <laughs> and there it is. It's catacombs I, down there. I could, yeah. yeah, I got yeah. lost with the elevators once. It was very interesting. I thought I might well, not get out again. <laughs> there should be a huge meeting of all the people in town, historical society, this yeah, committee. Hmm. You know, not a bad just idea. Just say, what are we going to do? Yeah, you're really We've right about the have generational shift. Yeah, it, it's and scary. It is scary. And, and, and the, we think that stuff is stored on the internet, and it's not. It's disappearing already. People said, well, we can't keep all that. And we, archive gone even more um you know oral histories you know yeah well that we sort of know and can know um okay <laughs> well keeping us to task a little here um the only thing i have oh, i think i think we're just gonna skip that what's that i think we're just gonna we're gonna skip that. jacob's hat <laughs> okay All right, we're gonna no, skip i mean that. i i i you're where you were before <laughs> I'm taking the summer off. It's yeah. been a rather tumultuous you want me to couple scratch years it? for me. Okay. Scratch it off. Okay. I'm taking the summer off, but um, okay. come back to me like October the first. Hit me. Let okay. me say that. You know. I have one last thing. To <laughs> Has anyone noticed the the <laughs> new overlook sign? <laughs> the new overlook sign uh, on Chestnut. That just put one up a couple weeks ago. Uh, next to the blue. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, for the trail, At the, bottom the overlook Beacon, trail. Bottom of Beacon Street. Yeah, yeah. For Curtis yeah. Island overlook. Yeah, yeah. That. Uh -huh. okay. The yeah. brand new sign they went up. No, really. Oh, yeah, brand new. Sign. It's gorgeous, and I was wondering who did that, <laughs> and and it's fantastic. Absolutely. And it's I wonder so if there's an opportunity to connect that to any kind of GoFundMe for Curtis Island. Yeah, I, I wanted to put it. Donation box and, a, and, <laughs> yeah. a, and a, that actually I've been looking at because they've got a gorgeous new yeah. sign, but also with uh, a, a place to go go fund me. Well, that would make so sense. We, I know we we go to uh, I don't. I think uh, you're not going to really put a donation box there. No, no I'm not. <laughs> it could it could be you know tastefully done. Like yeah. On the island, you know, there's a sign in place on the island, you know, for guests oh, to sign in. People to them too. I, I know I keep saying QR codes, but I mean a QR <laughs> code to a to right. a GoFundMe website where you can just quickly yeah. Zelle yeah, or Venmo website. five bucks, yeah. ten bucks. We're, we're working on that. Okay. And we're also we're creating a website. Great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But you got I, you should check out the sign. It's gorgeous. I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Stephanie um, said it's probably Parks and Rec that put it up there. Or I know Allison was involved in opening a lot of those, you know, big bringing awareness to the time, town to the right of ways. Right, right of ways. Right. And I think it I actually I think it is Parks and Rec. Is it the sign. Conservation Commission yeah. sign? I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. Okay, so we're working way too hard this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any other things you want to talk about, or we want to I just uh, close want to the say this garden club thing, the show thing that they put up is really interesting. People will look at it. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All right, we yeah, are adjourned. Thank you for coming. Thank Great. you. Thank you, everyone. Great. Come again. Good information. <laughs> you. I will. Do so you have oh. a? So many things happen on Tuesday. How do we kill the owl? I know. Yeah. So. Okay, so and I have a lot right to do now. there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Do you know how to kill the owl? Yeah. We just uh, yeah. stand yeah. there. We just sit down here. Yeah, just sit down. Because on that list, it just yeah, right. so. do, you, do you know that? Yeah. yeah. He's, um, he's, his name's on there. He didn't. She just came through. She knows who you are.